that in 2015, pretending that we have to choose between the economy and the environment is as harmful as it is wrong. Since 2015, Canada has invested a gigantic sum of $100 billion in fighting climate change and protecting the environment. As nations continue to find alternatives to stop burning fossil fuels, clean hydro energy stands as a great option for many. Currently, there are more than 57,000 large dams in the world which collectively produce approximately 4,300 TWH of hydropower. Hydropower itself constitutes 16% of the electricity produced around the world. At this point, it would be unfair to mention China, the largest producer of hydropower in the world. It has eight of the 20 largest energy generation dams in the world. And yet it still has a lot of untapped potential, which if fully exploited, can go up to 400 to 700 gigawatts and meet 30% of China's energy needs. But before we move further, take a moment to subscribe to our channel. We're committed to releasing two exciting new visionary build videos each week. Now, let's get back to this visionary build. Canada, although way behind China, still stands at an impressive fourth position in the biggest hydro producer list. The nation has a total hydro capacity of 83 gigawatts, while the largest contributors are the Rubert Barassa Dam and the Churchill Falls Generating Station. But Canada isn't stopping anytime soon. It has a new addition to the list the Site C Dam in British Columbia. It's located 14 kilometers southwest of Fort St. John and 80 kilometers downstream from the WAC Bennett Dam. Once completed in 2025, Site C would be the fourth largest producer of hydroelectricity in British Columbia with an expected capacity of 1,100 megawatts and an expected annual output of 5,000 gigawatts of electricity. For context, this is enough to power 450,000 homes or 1.7 million electric vehicles per year. Located on the Peace River, the same as the WAC Bennett, Site C would flood an 83-kilometer length of the Peace River Valley, widening the river by up to three times. It'll generate 35% of the energy of the WAC with only 5% of its reservoir area. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing for Site C as hundreds of complaints piled up regarding its effect on the environment, harm to indigenous communities, and the high cost. During a 2007 estimate, its cost was placed at $6 billion, which raised to $8 billion, then $10 billion, and finally to $16 billion. Legal troubles and the pandemic pushed the completion year from 2024 to 2025. In April 2016, a group of landowners and farmers from Peace River Valley launched a legal challenge to the project. According to Treaty 8, the indigenous people have a right to hunt, trap, and fish throughout the region. Even though the government is in consultation with the local communities, the West Moberly First Nation refuses to accept the loss of a vital part of their traditional territories. The proposed flood zone also includes hundreds of sacred and cultural sites that would be destroyed when water is raised. The dam's flood zone is also in the way of a rich biodiverse area having a significant number of black bears. It was proposed to relocate the bears to artificially constructed dens but the way it will be done is causing a stir in the public. The bears would have to be trapped, tranquilized, then moved prior to the dam being filled. This strategy was criticized for not only being dangerous, but also for the handlers being untested. The dam will also harm an already threatened fish species, the bull trout. Flooding of the valley would poison marine life with methylmercury for 20 to 30 years. That's not all. The Peace River Valley is also home to vast areas of agricultural land. Of the land to be flooded, there are 26 square kilometers of agricultural land within the project activity zone. Critics point out this area is vital for future horticultural expansion. Currently, the majority of British Columbia's foods imported from California. That's why this strip of land is important for the food security of the province. According to activist David Suzuki, we live in a food chain now in which food grows on average 3,000 kilometers from where it's consumed. The transport of all that food is dependent on fossil fuels. Food has got to be grown much closer to where it's going to be consumed. In addition, there was no guarantee of whether the dam would provide cheap electricity for consumers. Consequently, due to public pressure, the new provincial government submitted Site C for review to the BC Utilities Commission. The report concluded that terminating the project would be more costly than continuing it. An additional $1.8 billion was to be spent on site remediation costs, not to mention the $2.1 billion already spent on the construction. Later during the same year, the government decided to complete Site C. The British Columbians were stuck in a rabbit hole. If they don't complete Site C, they'll have a staggering $4 billion bill with nothing in return. 
This bill would reduce the funds needed for schools, hospitals, and other critical infrastructure. Then, there are concerns about the safety of the dam overall. Even though the project has the official backing of the provincial government, the opposition party, New Democratic Party, was reluctant due to its high cost to ratepayers. Its member, Adrian Dix, even called the Liberal government reckless for not having already done the review, as was recommended by the Federal Provincial Joint Review Panel. NDP requested a review of Site C, but it was revealed that wrapping it up would be a bigger hassle than continuing it. On the other hand, the dam would provide large and long-term energy for British Columbia while reducing greenhouse emissions. Site C is predicted to prevent approximately 30 to 70 million tons of carbon dioxide from being generated in the atmosphere. There are also talks to extend the electrical supply to Alberta and not just limit it to British Columbia. Additionally, the Joint Review Panel noted that Site C would produce lesser greenhouse emissions than any other option like a nuclear plant. The project is 80% complete with the tunnel conversion finished this month. Reservoir filling will start in the fall of 2023 and will take four months to fill the dam with water rising around 0.3 meters to 2.5 meters a day. It will be 52 meters deep close to the dam, 36 meters deep at Halfway River, and 18 meters deep near Hudson's Hope. To allow the construction of the Earthville Dam, the Peace River had to be diverted. This gives workers access to dry areas needed for construction. Diversion tunnels allow the river to keep flowing, but through a different route. The first step in diverting the river was the construction of two tunnels across the North Bank. Both tunnels are approximately 0.75 kilometers long and 0.11 kilometers in diameter. They allow an astonishing 3,000 cubic meters every second, equivalent to the water inside an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Four large rings were fitted inside one of the tunnels to restrict the water flow once the reservoir began filling. The area around the dam would be closed to boaters for safety purposes. As this would impact transport, a temporary portage system is created on the banks that would allow movement through trucks. A fishway facility is also built on the outlet of the tunnel so that fish have a safe pathway upstream. Then, a large rock berm would be created at the upstream cofferdam, as well as a few parts of the downstream cofferdams. When this milestone is done, the inlet and outlet cofferdams at the division tunnels are removed and water is allowed to move through them. During this, the crew will continue the construction of the dam in the dry area. Once completed, the majority of the water will accumulate at the upstream pond otherwise known as the head pond. The water height can be lowered or raised whenever BC Hydro wishes. The raised water level would be several meters higher than the normal height of the Peace River. As the river rises and widens by two or three times, the water will also cover parts of Highway 29, which winds along the north side of the Peace River in northeastern BC. The work involved designing and building approximately 30 kilometers of highway. In addition to the Halfway River Bridge, new crossings have been built at Cache Creek, Lynx Creek, Dry Creek, and Farrell Creek. All realigned segments of the highway have been open to traffic, although there can be some minor delays due to outstanding work being completed. With $16 billion in capital to be spent on this ambitious venture, all on the shoulders of taxpayers. Studies show that British Columbia will have a power surplus for years to come, putting a question mark on Site C's need. But with billions already committed, there's not much left to do. Do you think that a dam was a better option than other renewable sources like wind power, geothermal, and solar? Share your thoughts in the comments. We're releasing two videos every week. Subscribe and click the bell icon to stay up to date with visionary builds.